Welcome to the Helper Be Brave podcast show where you get great ideas on saving lives. I'm Amy with Embrace Grace. And I'm Jessica with Embrace Grace. So today we have someone that has really just her story and of how she helps has like changed. I was shook when I met her, like so amazing. So her name's Angela and she's with Unfaulted and how they help support women um, after they age out of foster care. And so it's a little bit different angle this time, you know, with our podcast show, we want to help people be brave and choose life. Um, but this really kind of helps more on the prevention side yeah. of um, when it, cause when these girls age out, they're subject to being trafficked to getting pregnant, um, different, different things that might could happen. And so having that st- support and family support right. and stability helps get them on the right track. Um, so she, you're going to be, I'm super excited because when she came into our office, I was on the phone and I come out and she's walking out and you've got tears in your face and Ryan's like, how much money do you need? <laughs> yeah, we were like, <laughs> oh my goodness, we had no idea. So I'm, you're gonna love. I'm this. so excited. Say, hey, Angela, we're so excited you're here. Hello, how are you? Really good. Um, I tell everyone about what you do because when you came to our office, like I had no idea this was a thing. And now I'm like, everyone needs to know. And so I'm so excited that you're going to get an opportunity to tell all the listeners about the amazing work that you do. Um, But a little bit, tell us a little bit about you. Like what, why are you passionate about um, helping women? So I have always had a love for seeing people live out to their full potential. Um, I remember that from being a little girl, um, just, seeing something in my friends and wanting to encourage them to run with it and to use their gifts and their talents. Um, but specifically for what I'm doing right now through Unfaulted, and gosh, it's a passion that God started stirring in my heart about three and a half, four years ago. And um, when I realized that there was just honestly this huge issue um, not being talked about, nothing being done, with young women aging out of the foster care system, my heart broke when I started looking into the statistics and getting to know some women who had experienced foster care without ever being adopted, without ever finding a family and what they were trying to do on their own. And um, I just have such a passion to see these women live to their full potential and to see um, the Lord work in their lives, to see them dream again and to live out who they were called to be. Yeah, that's so, it's, it's amazing. So tell everyone a little bit about um, just what you guys do and about how even, so maybe if you have some of the statistics, what, how are you, because a lot of people don't even know when girls age out of the foster care, what actually happens. So explain to everyone how it works. Uh, So there are statistics tell us approximately 23,000 kids that age out of the foster care system every year. That's men and women. Wow. Um, And essentially they turn 18 and they're no longer funded by the state that they're in. They're no longer considered wardens of the state because they're adults and they're sent out on their own. Um, I have heard story after story of these young women, specifically from ones that we work with through Unfaulted, who are turning 18 and they're ending up on the street. They're being handed a trash bag of their belongings and told good luck. Um, so when we learned that, when we saw what was happening, we wanted to build something to support these kids as they were going into adulthood. So what we do with Unfaulted is we come alongside these young women. We pair them with a family and mentors to help see them through life. Uh, We do life skill classes with them. We offer counseling. We really just walk alongside them in this journey of life and help, help them to have the tools and resources put in their hands that they've maybe never had access to before. Um, we're learning that so many of girls that are in the foster care system are trafficked. They are targeted. You know, they're kind of an easy prey, if you will. They're what they might be being offered by their trafficker as shelter and money and food is a lot better than the option of attempting to live out life on their own on the street. So for us personally, we have nine girls that we're actively working with and eight out of those nine girls have been trafficked. Wow. And that's just 
you know, it takes your breath away um, knowing that that's what's happening. Like you see the statistics. I saw that I think it was 70% of women in foster care are trafficked. Um, but then when you see that firsthand, you know, when you start working with these girls and you hear their stories and you realize that that's really what they're all dealing with. Um, and, and I can see how they don't feel like they have any other options. And it Absolutely. seems like you had said um, that, you know, sometimes they're just dropped off at homeless shelters or um, on their birthday. And yep. um, you had told a story even about a girl that was dropped off like super early in the morning. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. They loaded because- up all her stuff in a trash bag and gave her a bus ticket, dropped her off at the bus station. Um, one of our girls that we're working with, we got a phone call from someone that was working with her at the time and they said hey she's aging out on Saturday and if we don't find some place for her we're taking her and her six-month-old baby to the shelter in downtown Um, and so you know to know that that would have been where she was going had she not gotten connected with the family that she's connected with now had she not gotten her driver's license and a job and you know learned some of those skills like oh that hurts to think that that's where she would have been headed with her baby. Yeah, that is crazy. And it's like, happy birthday, it's 4 a.m. and (laughs) get out. Yeah, welcome to adulthood. (laughs) Yeah, that's horrible. This is your life now. Yeah, and and that they don't have anyone to turn to. So you guys have relationships or build relationships with those, with, is it like on the front end, like, hey, we have a girl, like you said, that's aging out on Saturday, or is it more on the back end? where you hear like a girl just got dropped off somewhere? What we have experienced so far has been about 50-50. Some of the girls, we've gotten a phone call from someone in their lives, whether that be a CASA worker or um, a family friend or of some sort, you know, somebody that cares about them um, has called us and said, hey, we have this situation and this is what's about to happen with this girl. Can you guys help? Um, but then the other half of our girls, they aged out and they tried to do life on their own and they ended up trafficked and homeless and um, abused and just in in situations that will just keep you up at night. And then they have found us and said, I, we need help. Mm-hmm. Um, will you please help us out? So it's about 50-50 as far as, you know, jumping in and getting them before they've actually hit the street um, versus the other half that they've been out there, they've done it, they've tried on their own. And honestly, some of them want to, right? Like at 18, yeah, I thought I could handle life on my own. Um, so a lot of them at 18, they're like, I'm out of here. I'm an adult. I got this. Um, and a year in, they realize they don't, they can't do it on their own. Yeah. None of us could. So like what kind of families are reaching out? How do they get connected? Like, is there training for them? Tell us about that. Absolutely. Uh, so we call our families forever families. And essentially we're asking them to make a permanency commitment in these girls' lives, letting them know through our training um, a lot about trauma, a lot about the foster care system and what life has looked like for some of these girls. Um, You know, there's a lot of training that we do. There's a lot of training that you can do, but a lot of it is also just hands-on getting to know these girls. We really strive or look to have organic relationships formed and setting these families who have been trained in positions where they can be around the girls and interact with them and just letting those relationships form on their own to where one of these girls is able to look and see these adults care about me. Um, all of our families come from within the church, not not my church, not your church, just the church. Um, we really believe that the church is the answer to this problem and that God has called us to be parents, to, to love the fatherless. Um, and so that's what we do. We, we find families that are willing to be a parent to an adult child. Because in all reality, these girls may be 18, 19, 20. When you've experienced trauma, especially like these girls have, it stops your brain development. It's, mm-hmm. You're looking at working with, you know, a 12 to 15 year old, not a 20 year old. And they um, haven't been so parented or nurtured or anything like that. So to be able to... Yeah have that now someone like firmly love you exactly um they've not experienced any of that and so really what we we ask our families to do is treat them like you would your own child uh your own adult child you know let them have a place to sit down at the table 
let them come over and celebrate them on their birthdays. Have Christmas with them. You know, do life with them. Allow them to be a part of your family. And my hope and dream in this, honestly, is to see so many adult adoptions happening. It, you can legally adopt someone as an adult. You can? And what a gift. I didn't that know that. I want all women. of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I didn't know right that you can, you can really legally adopt an adult? Yes. What? Yes. And that so is amazing. every single one of these girls' dreams. I mean, when you tell them that, their face just lights up and they're like, I'd given up on adoption years ago. Aww. So to think that these families could walk in and be a part of their lives and adopt them, and for them to be welcomed into a family the way God welcomes us into his is just, that makes me so excited. Yes. And I love even if you do get, hear about it before they age out, um, how you guys bring them a birthday present um, yes. on their 18th birthday. So sweet. What kind of things do you give them? This all started out of, um, I'm a really awkward person <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was so talking. Are we. Um, with, <laughs> I think we all are a little bit. <laughs> I was talking with our team, and I was like, "You guys, this just seems so weird." Like, we get a call, and it's like, "Hey, we have this girl, and she's about to be homeless." And then this group of strange women shows up, and we're like, "Hey, happy birthday! Glad you're not homeless anymore." Oh my and gosh. so we were like, "How do we make that not awkward?" And <laughs> can we you celebrate them? <laughs> a gift. <laughs> we were like, "We just celebrate them, right?" Like. What will we do with our own kids? So we bring them a birthday box. And in that box, there's a handwritten note from one of our volunteers just letting them know that they've been paid for, that we're excited for them to be a part of the unfaulted family. They get a Bible and socks and a journal and pens and girly things um, that are just kind of fun. We, you know, get bring in donations. And so each box sometimes is a little bit different just based off of. Yeah, what um, you have. Yeah. I think we gave you a ton yeah. of tank tops, too. Yes. Oh, my gosh. They love those. Like, <laughs> those tank we tops had never ending time. tank tops. <laughs> there was like a thousand of them. Someone had given them to us, but I'm so glad that you guys can oh, use them. Oh, they love They're those really tank cute. Tops. Super cute and soft. Hey, guys. It's Jessica taking a quick break from the podcast to share some news with you. What if we lived in a world where every woman with an unplanned pregnancy always felt empowered to choose life for her unborn baby? Well, get your copy of Help Her Be Brave to discover your place in the pro-life and pro-love movement, a place where you can put your passions into action. To pre-order the book or learn more about the Help Her Be Brave initiative, visit www.helpherbebrave.com today. That's so sweet. I, I love that. so do you have a story or I know you guys are relatively new, but have you do you have any kind of a story of a mom that you guys have helped? Uh absolutely. Um so let me tell you about our mom that I mentioned kinda just a little bit ago when we had gotten the call from her caseworker that, hey, if, if we don't find somewhere for her to go, then we're taking her and her six month old and dropping her off at the shelter. Um so that young woman came to us in January. She has since gotten her driver's license. She has a car. She has a family who sat down with her, and it was the most beautiful thing. They they sat there and, and vowed to her, essentially, you know, we are here for you, and we want to see you succeed, and we believe in you. And I know that, that we may be strangers to you right now, but this is a commitment that we are making to you. And it was the most beautiful thing to see and to have watched her. In, in really just a few, what, like nine months go from this close, you know, like right there to, to being on the streets with her baby, to being a part of a family where she has dinner with them regularly. You know, they, they talk regularly and she's a part of that community. She has gotten her first job. She has moved into her own apartment. Wow. And so now her and her wow. daughter are in their own place and working on their dreams and their goals. And I actually had a wonderful conversation with her yesterday and she was just telling me, she said, like counseling has made such a difference in my life and being a part of this community and knowing I'm not by myself, it's so exciting. And I always look forward to our life skills classes and I feel like I'm learning so much and I'm growing so much. Um, and so how beautiful is that, that she was brought into a family she was brought into a community where, you know, she was no longer alone and hopeless. Her options have just opened up tremendously and she's starting to dream again and think about what she wants to do in the future and going to school and 
you know, being the best mom that she can be for her baby. So oh my goodness, I am trying to keep it together <laughs> over here. Oh, so oh my sweet. goodness. Um, okay. So then what are kind of some practical ways that people can help? Because I don't remember if you mentioned this, but I remember you saying it before that some, some girls do age out and they do have a place to go. So, mm-hmm. you know, a friend or whatever. So they have a place, but they still don't have a family support. So it's not necessarily that the girl lives with you. It could be, but it mm-hmm. could also just mm-hmm. be that you're her family for forever family. Yes. What are some of the ways that people can help or get involved? Um, yeah, uh, so many ways. Um, the first, honestly, is just spreading the word about this. Um, this is not something that's talked about. I have been a little ashamed that, you know, I grew up in the church and I had never thought about this population of people being oppressed. And as a believer, I'm called to look after this, this demographic, this group of young women. And I didn't well, orphans and widows. Uh, so a huge thing is just spread the word. Just let people know that there is, there are hurting kids that are, expected to become adults overnight and being thrown out to the wolves essentially. Uh, another way is volunteering. Um, we're a brand new organization and we are always, always, always looking to grow. Um, and there's so many ways right now, especially that, you know, we need help being a brand new organization. Um, just some specific skills and talents that we're looking for. And so um, looking for anyone who's willing to jump in and get involved and help in that way. Um, and the huge, you know, volunteer role that we have is, is being a mentor, being a forever family. And that does take quite a bit of training. Um, but jumping in and getting there and knowing that you're trained and you're ready and that God's going to bring the right girl into your life to be a part of your family um, is just huge. We're also always looking for people that are willing to employ and train our girls. They don't have work experience or education. Um, nor do they know how to really sit down and interview. You know, they're not going to look you in the eye. They're not going to be able to tell you their strengths and weaknesses. They they really just need a company or an individual that is willing to believe in them and give them a chance and, you know, do a little bit of training and just hands-on relationship with them. And then, of course, I mean, with any nonprofit giving, It costs us about $9,000 is what we're averaging to see a girl from coming into the program and starting with just the basics, right, of a birth certificate, a social security card. Okay, now we've got to get a GED. Now we need to get you a driver's license and some driving courses and then find a car for you and get it. I mean, there's there's a lot, right, starting out before you can be an adult. And they don't have any of that. Wow. you know, if you've grown up in a family, like those are things that are just kind of there and done for you. Like I'm pretty sure my parents had a lockbox of all my stuff just ready to go whenever it was time for me to get my hands on and I need it. But Mm -hmm. what we're finding is we've got to apply for a birth certificate and a social security card and then wait for them to get those before they can even start a job. Yeah, you can't apply. You can't do anything without those documents. You really can't. Um, So we're really starting from scratch. Um, And then we do, we pay for counseling for the girls. Um, we do life skill classes with the girls. We do scholarships for them when they're getting ready to go to school. We help get them, you know, clothing and food and, and just those basic, like those necessities that you would need. You've, you've really got to look at this from starting from homelessness. Even if they didn't spend any time on the street, they're coming to you as if they were coming from the street. Yeah. Um, and so we're really starting from the ground and working our way up. So obviously financial donations are always huge. Um, or really just any way that we can partner with people to help in those areas to save money. So those are just a few ways to get involved. Um, and we are looking to grow our team and would love for anybody that just feels a calling or a tug on their heart in this to jump in and get involved. Yeah, that is amazing. I feel like y'all aren't going to have any problem getting, getting people involved people in excited. This. I know, just more people need to hear about it. Like what you said. Yes. Well, that I is amazing. Yes, thank you so much, Angela, for coming on today and sharing about what you're doing and uh, helping these girls be brave. And um, it's just beautiful. We we're so proud of the work that you're doing and we're going to keep telling everyone about it. I really do tell everyone. She literally does tell everyone. (laughs) Yeah, I do. So we're big fans. That makes me so happy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. Yes. Thank you so so much. much. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.
girl, you okay after that? Oh my goodness. Like how, how did I not know? How do we not know that these things are happening? Um, like I grew up in the church too. I had no idea. And I feel like it's one of those things that like it's right there in front of our faces. Of course there's kids in foster care or in the foster system that are, are aging out without families. Like why are we not doing something about this? I know we need to be talking about it more and the church as a whole talking about it more. And there's so many different angles we could take with helping an organization like unfaulted. Um, because you could, maybe if you're a counselor, you know, she had mentioned that unfaulted pays for counseling for these mom, for these girls. And so it maybe you're a counselor and you want to give of your time to, give that service for free, that helps unfaulted. Um, maybe you're um, an attorney. There might be some legal things. That yeah, sounds the, like there's lots of paperwork yeah, that the girl needs. Um, obviously helping financially yeah. for something like this. Um, and even just helping, if you don't feel called to be a forever family, even helping the forever family with yeah, different being a support things system for the f- forever families. Right. So definitely you guys need to get connected. It's unfaulted.org is their website. Follow them on social media. I think social media is unfaulted.co. And um, they are just, this organization needs to be heard. They need, yes. everyone needs get behind this, to y'all. know about this amazing organization that really has just started. And I'm so amazed at how well they love and how yes. they help the these as women. she was as she was talking um like I could totally feel God speaking to my heart about you know we have four sons and my heart has always longed for a daughter while I am so thankful and blessed to be a mama for like I've always known that someone would be a part of our family and I just really felt God speaking something to my heart about that so you know really encouraging listeners viewers on um, the foster system isn't just babies and toddlers, it's teenagers, it's high schoolers, it's forever families, and everyone needs a family, everybody needs a cheerleader and somewhere to go home to and somebody to call when they've got a flat tire, I can't imagine. Yeah, or, or spending Christmas together yes. and having a family to turn to. Yeah, it's it's an amazing organization. So definitely get connected to them, unfaulted.org. And also Embrace Grace is always a great place to serve. Get involved with embracegrace.com. Um, there's Love Box initiatives. You can start groups. You can help support groups that are already going in your community. Um, so get connected there too. Thank you so much for watching today. Please share this with your friends and subscribe to our channel and, um, and share this podcast with, with everyone that you know. Everyone needs to know about this amazing organization. So thank you so much for tuning in.